It's one of America's closest allies. On behalf of the American people, welcome. Uh, we appreciate your friendship. And this month, it beheaded 10 people. We're talking about Saudi Arabia, a country where punishment by sword is common, where a person can be publicly flogged for insulting Islam, and where women aren't allowed to drive. By the State Department's own admission, Saudi Arabia is a major abuser of human rights. So why, then, is it such a close ally of the U.S.? The answer dates back decades to when, during World War II, Franklin Delano Roosevelt declared the defense of Saudi Arabia of vital interest to the U.S. In other words, the Saudis could provide a steady supply of oil. Today, the relationship is more strategic than it is economic, thanks in part to a boom in U.S. shale oil production. Here's how the president explained it. Sometimes we have to balance our need to speak to them about human rights issues uh, with immediate concerns that we have in terms of countering terrorism or uh, dealing with regional stability. The U.S. has a long history of these sorts of trade-offs in the Middle East, like when it supported Iran under the Shah, as well as Saddam Hussein in the 80s. Basically, Saudi Arabia helps keep other regional powers, like Iran, in check. And that's so far proven too valuable for the U.S. to risk it over the kingdom's human rights record. Not to mention, Saudi Arabia is a key partner in the U.S.-led fight against ISIS and its arming Syrian rebels deemed moderate who are trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. On Wednesday, President Obama arrived in Saudi Arabia to pay respects to the late King Abdullah and meet with his successor, who, by the way, has already had one beheading on his watch. For Newsy, I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn, multiple sources of broader view.